she didn't leave me beat. Next, I just cur that shit, yeah, the album riffs. Labels bout to tell me how they gonna make me rich. 50 million to penny, they ain't touching it. Yeah, they ain't touching it. Next, I just cur that shit, yeah, the album riffs. Labels bout to tell me how they gonna make me rich. 50 million to penny, they ain't touching it. Good evening everyone, welcome back to another episode of RSCast. Sorry I'm a little bit late, we had some technical issues. Well, I'm saying we're, we have them. I think everyone has a Discord issue at this point, so we were also a little bit delayed. But, same crew as always, Pegasus Kingsman. Starting with Pegasus, how are you guys doing? Oh, I'm I'm doing fantastic today, and you partly know why, Tavish. It's been, it's oh, been a great week for me, but, you know, I'm on stream after going... After going Ato, but you know, Kingsman might tell you a bit about later. How are you doing, Kingsman? Yeah, I'm doing good. I just found out I still have to play three sub games this season. So I'm absolutely, <laughs> I'm absolutely distraught sat here now. I had the smartest plan ever in Master to stop myself playing sub games. Just found out I have to play three. So I'm absolutely fuming. But apart from that, I'm doing very good. Yeah, so to any of your teammates listening, um, enjoy having to play with Kingsman for at least three series in the coming three weeks. <laughs> they weren't enjoying my, condo <laughs> my condolences to you. But, you know, let's just go straight into it. We're already 10 minutes late. Let's just roll everything. We're going to talk about the res results from week six, starting in prospect with the Glacies Conference. Pegasus giving this one to you. For well, once, Glacies didn't have too many draws, and the draws that did come were exciting, with Naja drawing against Pawns and Craftsman drawing against Terra. Quite a lot of distance between themselves on the table last week, hoping to try and close that gap a little bit. But sadly, the loss streak continues for Ankol. With 2C, with 2 Sai, I'm, I'm not sure. Unfortunately, they went 0-8, losing to both Genzai and Tom Foolery. But with a loss streak and a 0-8 score, we've got a win streak continuing with an 8-0 score for Newborn, who sweeped both Terra and Genzai. And unfortunately, with a lot of what I said right now, you can tell it's been a pretty poor week from Terra. Uh, and you know, you're not the only one struggling with the, the Ox Gaming you know, prospect team's name, I think. Hecky created a name, but none of us can pronounce it. So, Kingsman to you! Oh. What happened at Ignis? Well, big news, oh, the no. team has finally got their first win. It's Cardinals. They have a 4-0 sweep over Caro, the team above them that were looking to push towards the top six. Nope. Don't win a single game or it could be a forfeit, I don't know. But huge week for them as they get a 4-0 week, sending Caro to be the only team in Ignis to go double loss. But Ultra and Obscurity continue their run at the top, both going 7-1 and one this week in a huge, huge week for both sides to keep them at the top of the table. On one side, not able to find a win this week near the top, are Mosaic. They got a 2-2 draw with Jebatus, who are near the bottom of the table and a side they should be beaten, and a loss to Tartarus, a side that were one spot below them and really, really pushing that top three spot so you know when you said that one that first is like wow probably an ff win it's like i'm gonna check discord but discord's down so if someone in chat knows the answer then gladly otherwise you know congrats carol you get your first win so going to the standings right now pegasus giving it to you for glaciers well parmesan 
have had a great week with their double wins and it's for that reason that they push themselves up the table but just like I said it's it's not been the best for Terra going negative with a draw and loss which is why we see them drop down in that third to I, I would like to say sixth place spot looking very very tight newborn within three games and propel and Genzai within two and a lot of movement between four to seven as a result of a lot of these results and the top three absolutely dominating and Ankol like we said had a zero and eight week and it's given them now equal game wins with tomfoolery who actually did manage to get themselves a win this week all right so the top is solidifying at the bottom still somewhat battling to, to make the top six so let's see how the terror no, the ignis conference is doing here i want to say terror but that's a team kingsman take it away ultra and obscurity continue that dog fight for first place 35 wins for both teams Mosaic and Tartarus so have opened themselves up to Livens and Taisho. 28-28, 27-27 respective. A huge top three dogfight with these teams is going to as uh, to continue. Ballistic ba bas sorry. Basilisks. I got shouted at that for the first week. Uh go <laughs> to seventh on 21 wins. Only six game wins off the top six, but still a fight back required. Jabatus, they managed to hold Mosaic to a 2-2 draw this week. But 17 wins will leave them 10 off the top six. Two series and a half gap. Caro, they got swept by Cardinals in an FF win for them this week, which will leave them 15 off. Not exactly what they want at this point in the season. And Cardinals, they do manage to go equal at least due to that four and four week due to that forfeit, but leaving them 17 games off of six with only 24 games left in the league play season. Yeah, so here as well, there's a little, the difference is a little bit less than compared to the other conference, but still, there's a small difference there. So now, gonna look at the fixtures for week number seven. Pegasus, take it away. Well, we've got a first versus second match and a third versus fourth with Naja versus Palmis or Najo and Newborn versus Terra, hoping to try and leapfrog some teams, try and close that gap at the top. These three teams have been, the top three teams, I'd say, have been completely dominating so far. But if Terra can get a nice win against Newborn, they can add another party to the mix. And throughout the rest of it, Ankle Watusi or Watusai have to play Terra and Propel. So after a zero and eight week, it really doesn't get much easier for them. But behind the scenes, I'll be rooting for them. All right, so now going to you, Kingsman, for the Ignis conference. Well, we talked about that top six dogfight, and there's one thing that is going to separate that top six even more this week, and I think it's how Livens perform. They have Jabatus, who are in eighth place, and Basilisks in sixth. A double win week for Livens will really solidify that top six going into roster lock and would really keep those sides away, but a massive top of the table game. It's going to be Tartarus versus Obscurity and Obscurity versus Alter. It's, it's the first versus second. It's a seven game difference to third place. A sweep for either team sets them packing to that first place. But another tough game for Obscurity afterwards in Tartarus and Alter's other game is Serene Taisho. So tough weeks for the top two. This is what makes and break sides in all the tiers. A first versus second, a game versus your rival, and also a game with two sides for each, for each team that is performing significantly well. And a sweep for either of those, that fourth or sixth place side, leave them within reaching distance of that top three. So a lot of big matchups happening in the Ignis Conference that can still change a lot in the top three. But that is enough for Prospect. Let's move on to Challenger. Let's see what happened here, starting obviously with the Glacies Conference. So Pegasus, take it away. Well, Bishops, like we were talking about last week, made a roster change, getting rid of Sam Dusk for Borsvel. So can their dominance continue? The answer is yes. They went 7-1 to one this week, dropping a game to Neptunium and getting a sweep against Kyomi, a match which was on stream and was closer than I think that 4-0 gives it credit to. But speaking of Kyomi... 
they end up drawing Gelvier. So maybe now they are your team to watch to make an, an, a nice late season comeback. And another important draw this week was Impulse versus Mischief. Impulse being a lot lower on the table, Mischief being a bit higher up, which allows that middle of the table pack to creep ever so closer and overtake. Now, Feather, they had a huge week. A double win with a sweep against Apprentices. So, they were second place last week. Now, they get a chance to catch up. Lots of gaps closing. It felt like it couldn't get any closer in the previous few weeks. Well, guess what? It is next week. Once again, I keep on saying it. We might see a lot of movement. You say that every week, and every week you disappoint. So hopefully <sighs> you you'll be right for one week. But I'm Kingsman, what happened in Ignis? Well, two teams decided it was hammer time. Orcus at the bottom of the table, eight and zero week, four zero onto Eclipse mid table side, a brilliant result for them, and a four zero onto Strugglers Masai as well. Huge week for them, and near the top of the table, Serene Yamato go 4-0 with a sweep again onto Eclipse, and 0-8 week, a week to forget for the side that were looking at top three, who now might be looking at mid-table at best, and also a 4-0 onto long-term strugglers, Kanans, and I know Tavish will hate me for saying that, but there is some light at the end of the tunnel there, as Kanan's got a 2-2 draw. On to Crusaders, who are mid-table. So it's taking those games off those mid-table sides, which I think at this point, Tavish, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what you're going for. You're going to try and upset those teams near the top of the table. I'm just trying to cast chaos. That's the fun thing about this league. But yes. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is we cannot win against any team, but we can draw against Crusaders twice in a row. So something good, I guess. But it's going to the standings. Pegasus, the Glacis Conference. Well, there we go. There's some movements like I did sort of promise last week. We've got Feather, Gelvier and Mischief making a lot of forward progress, trying to secure themselves those are playoff spots. And then from 6 to 9, Neptunium, Cascabel, Kyomi and Impulse drop. Obviously, Cascabel having quite a hard week facing Bishops and I believe I said they drew Gelvier, so I definitely wouldn't count them out. As you can see, the game wins are very close around them. 21 sharing with Neptunium, with Mischief only one game win in front of them. And Gelvier, four game wins. Can they come back in the final weeks? Well, only they can prove that. Might have to pull out a few sweeps, however. Uh, so here you have one at the top who is has a quite margin, and the rest is... Still pretty close to each other, they can move around. So we're looking forward to those fixtures, but first, the Ignis standings. Kingsman, what can you tell us? 8-0 week for Serene Yamato leaves them at the top of the table. Ed of Shrine, who went win and draw this week, both sides only lost one. Two games separate them, it's going to come down to the wire, I reckon. But Kapakli, draw and win for them as well, going to leave them pushing towards the top two with only a series gap on 29. Pardis on 4th on 27, a win last week. Not exactly what they wanted, but it does allow them to drop out of the top three and slip behind Pardis. 24 wins for the 0-8 Eclipse this week. As, uh, as I said, a week to forget for Eclipse. And, well, it just moves Crusaders even closer on 24. Komodo's 22, a draw last week. No win for them. They only found three all season, but... Form needs to pick up if they want to find that sixth place. But Orcus, a brilliant week for them. 8 0, pushes them literally next to sixth on two wins. Then Masai, their second double loss week in a row. 18 wins, they're slowly slipping down the table. And Kanans, who out of 48 games, have got six wins. And fun fact for you that Tavish has just pointed out for me and laid me up perfectly. Four of the six wins all season long have been found against Crusaders. So. <laughs> That's a fun little st st stat for you. Yeah, don't struggle with the word stat. It's it's very difficult. I know four letters is hard <laughs> to pronounce. But, you know, you, you're right there. But same as with the Glazes Conference. It's still pretty close and everything can move. But now looking forward to the fixtures of week number seven. Starting with the Glazes. Pegasus, what matchups did you pick out? Well, it's a very, very tough week for Gelvier. Having to... Play against third place Feather, 
trying to get in front of them and get even closer to that second place spot. I mean, I think first is way too far away for them, but talking about first, that's the other team that Govi are going to have to play. It's Bishops, who, if their tear continues, can Govier really take down these giants and give them, I believe, even their second draw? They've only had one. It's, it's just incredible, but... Also, Kaiomi, I believe, will be playing Feather if I looked at that right. Oh, no, I didn't. Is Govier playing Feather? Kaiomi play Cascabel, who are right next to them on the table. So, lots of progress to be made overall. Govier will be my team to watch, however. All right, so you are going to look out for Govier. And Kingsman, any team that you're looking out for in the Ignis Conference? Well, there's one. They, and they went 8-0. Oh, no, not 8-0. No, they went 0-8. Oh, the re complete reverse. It's Eclipse. Eclipse last week were three games off of Serene Yamato. They are now, I'm pretty sure if I do the maths right, 11. So a big bounce back week is needed and they have the chance. They have Masai and Crusaders. A win over Crusaders for them is essential this week it allows them to build that bridge up and push away from the top six but i was talking about Kanans to take games off teams as well and they have the perfect week to do it they play pardus in fourth place a side that need wins to get back into that top three and shrine as i say it should be an easy week for shrine they have seventh and tenth but dropped games here in comparison to yamato who have crusaders and pardus a tough week for them if they're dropping the same amount of games as Yamato this week, then things might be looking shaky towards the end of the season. All right, and there you have it. Everything from the Challenger tier, and now we're slowly climbing higher and higher in the tiers here. As we're going to move on towards Rival, and starting with the results from Week 6, Pegasus giving it to you for the Khaleesi's Conference. Well, I said that Knights had an easy week last week. And then they ended up dropping to Python in a shock loss, going 3-1 down. And just to recover a bit of sanity, they did end up sweeping Tonbo. Tonbo luckily also had last place Montbelliard to play. So they did end up neutralizing some of that with a sweep. And it was a tough week for Journeyman, who had to go through the gauntlet facing Uranum and Mystics. However, they came out with a draw and a win. So... A very, very good week for them, considering the context. Continuum, also getting a shock sweep versus Mirage. And a nice little mid-table battle. These are the type of games that I like to look at. One's fighting for playoffs and play-ins. Uranum managed to edge out Ash in a 3-1 win. All right, there you have the Khaleesi's results. Now going to you, Kingsman, for the Ignis results. Well, Erebos, they have uh, taken the talking point as they go 8-0, and o, along with Nightfall going 7-1. and one. But one thing I will talk about, though, Sanctum versus Onka. Onka made roster changes since he said they'd win every game to the end of the season. That's what he told me. But they lose to Sanctum, who were in ninth place at the bottom. And it's a huge result for Sanctum, who did end up getting swept by Serene Meiji, giving some life to the top of the table battle. But a lot of draw a lot of wins and losses for some sides, and sides that just can't be dropping games at this point are dropping games. It's gonna make the top of the table look spicy. Yes, it does. And with those results, I'm curious to see how the standings have changed. So first Briggs is going to you for the Glacy standings. Well, despite their loss, they still sit well, they now sit at the top of the table. Knights are your new kings of the rival Glacies Conference, with Journeyman also taking that space right behind them. Mirage on a big drop, but now still equaling game wins against Journeyman, and only one point behind Knights. It's going to be a real battle to get that number one seed. And some movement in the middle of the table as well, Continuum. Dropping out of that playing spot to Ash, who now sit like a like like near the top on equal game wins. So it's gonna be a battle for that sixth place spot. And next week I'm sure we'll see that move even more. Yeah, so 
top, well, basically everything in the top seven is still pretty close to each other. So a good week for one team, a bad week for another team can shift everything. But let's see if the Ignis conference is exactly like that. So Kingsman, going to you. Well, at the top of the table, they found a loss this week, but it's going to be Onka moving up the table. And well, Nightfall, they also move up. And well, it's for Pegasus that's meant to promise you movement, but clearly here in Ignis, we get all the movement. Now, Onka, Nightfall, Meiji, all up the table. 35, 33, 31, top three, all with all safe within three games to Erebos, who stormed this week, going 8-0 compared to... Hydras who found a loss this week that drops them down into fifth. Caligo, they're the only neutral team this week in sixth of the win loss, with only three games down to the Tizok, who were the were the second side alongside Sentinels to go double loss this week. Yoruba then on 18, they found a draw this week, and that moves them within one of Tizok and Sanctum picked up a massive win this week. They're picking up form of momentum. All three wins have been in the last four games. So a potential late season push for play-ins is on for them and Sentinels. Their second double loss week after finding a win in week four. They just haven't been able to pick up their flow since and sit on a minus 77 goal difference with 11 game wins. Uh, so here the same as in the Glaciers Conference. The top six is still pretty close to each other. Top seven maybe even. Uh, pretty close to each other that anything can happen. So now going forward to the fixtures for week number seven. Glacis, Pegasus, what matchups did you pick? Well, it's a similar situation for Mystics, like I said, in the Challenger tier, where they're going to have to face number one and number three. Knights dropping a win in the last week. Can Mystics take another one from them? And they'll also be facing Mirage. We said it was really close in that third to fourth spot. So, like we said, lots of leapfrogs are waiting to happen. I'm just praying we don't get a draw out of that. Also, we have near the middle of the table, we've got Uranum versus Continuum. And closer to the bottom, we've got Python versus Ash. Like I said before, trying to get those playing spots. It is late in the season. Time is running out. This is your time to perform. Yeah, there's only three more weeks left, and then everything has you know, is done and dusted before we go into the you know, playoffs, play-ins. So, you're right there. There's not that much time anymore for those teams to bounce back. But, Kingsman, are there also that many exciting matchups in the Ignis Conference? Oh, yes, there is. Erebos, they go 8-0, but they play Onka this week, top of the table. They also play Sanctum, who took a win off top of the table. Massive week for them. And Onka also have Serene Meiji in third place. Another massive game for them. And Sanctum, I talked about them going 8-0 this week. They have Nightfall as well. Can they cause another massive upset at the top of the table and take those games off, off Nightfall? Serene Meiji also have Hydras in fifth place. A loss for Serene Meiji there. We'll see Hydras sneak closer. Hydras do have a higher amount of wins compared to Serene Meiji. That plus four difference will keep them apart. And then near the bottom of the table, you've got games like Sentinels, Yoruba, and Yoruba Hydras. So there's going to be some real movement within that top six and bottom four this week. It's just which teams are going to get the better results. Uh, so, well, you did deliver. There are some interesting matchups happening in the, the Ignis Conference as well. And hopefully we'll see some on stream would be nice so with that rival is done we're slowly climbing higher and higher we're going to elite obviously starting with the results for week six pegasus giving this one straight to you for the glaciers conference well bladesmiths got a double loss in the week before so they've recovered it with a double win which includes a sweep against scorch and a 3-1 against Saturnia. We said last week it would be an easy week. And they've come out with a 7-1. So they've proven that for us. And you, I, I feel like it's always been so exciting with Ox Gaming this week, funnily enough. They continue their double win form, beating Velocity and also sweeping Caspian, which is an extremely tough game. Caspian with... Quite a poor week. I criticised them for going win draw. This time they've gone double loss, losing to, like I said, Andrew, and also profits. 
Renai also lose to Scorch and Rooks in these mid-table battles that look to be so, so important for them. They are going to be feeling those losses. Yeah, so Caspian not having a, a good week and Bladesmith having a perfect week, from, uh, like you described there. So, Kingsman, any teams did something like that in the Ignis Conference or is the Glacius Conference the, the better one of the lead this week? Mm, well, it depends how much you like 4 rows. Because there was only one, and that was found by Darkness, <laughs> who topped the standings this week going 7-1. and one. It's a huge week for them as they look to continue their dominance towards the top of the table. One team that has slipped off, though, Drakes. They take a loss against Thanatos, 3-1. And they also take a loss against Zulu. Games that they really should be winning if they want to keep up with Darkness. And games that just drop in... Like, they shouldn't be. But it's a still... Most teams go in 4-4 four four with wins and losses all over the board. And your only team to go double win top of the table. Well, that is definitely interesting. So, you know, one sweep, one draw. The rest only being wins. So, that's good. Now, let's take a look at the standings. Pegasus, what happened in Glacier's Conference? Well, I said Ox Gaming and you had a huge week as they fly all the way up to third place on 27 game wins. Only two behind Caspian, who, of course, had their double loss. And Scorch, I said it wasn't a good week for them. You're seeing that big red arrow next to them, and I don't think it's doing it justice for how much they have actually dropped this week. It has been a brutal one, a week to forget, one you've got to just regain from. But look at this, from Saturnia to Scorch, 10th to 2nd, 10th uh, to 7th, sorry, there is only one point in it. We seem to have a pretty defined top 6 at the moment, which is of course your playoff playing spot. It's going to require a shock hero team near at the bottom with such, with not much time left to even get themselves back in the running to make it to the next stage. Well, four teams, one win difference, and if they have a good week, then basically everything in the middle of the table will shift, so that's an interesting one. But first, going to the Ignis standings, Kingsman, giving it to you. Well, we see how crucial that double loss is as Drakes fall off the top of the table as Darkness resume leadership. 36 wins, 33 for Drakes, and 30 for Vanguards. They're your top three sides with Temple finding a very nice little week for themselves as they pick up a win and loss. It's going to see them on 28. Double loss for Tigris, though. They haven't found a win in the last two weeks. It leaves them on 25 in fifth place. A win for Thanatos this week, breaking the streak they've had in the last two weeks as they find their second win of the season on 21, but they're not safe yet. Carbo with a lovely draw win week. Ties, finds them tied with Thanatos with what looks on paper a far better record but not having the game wins to show it. It's Kotal on 17, finding another, again a win-loss week. And Zulu as well, a win-loss week. A huge win it was as well on two Drakes. And Serena Zucci, they found their first win of the season, but it wasn't enough to lift them from the bottom of the table. Yeah, so here it is. A little bit of a bigger difference compared to the Glacius Conference, but still... If one of the bottom teams really pops off, then the middle of the table will definitely shift. So now, let's see if we have some interesting matchups that can change the middle of the table. First going to you, Pegasus, for anything in the Glacius Conference. Well, the question is, can Andrew continue their ridiculous win streak? They are on four at the moment, and now they play Saturnia and Scorch, which at the moment look like games that they should win. So, could we see... A six win streak coming from them. And Velocity, we said that the bottom four teams is a bit of a pit at the moment. Well, they're going to have to fight amongst each other. It's Velocity versus Saturnia. And I saw another earlier. Yes, yeah, Scorch versus Profit. Second, seventh place, trying to catch up to that sixth. We said there was a bit of a gap between those two positions. Well, here's the opportunity for it to close a little bit. Yeah, so we might even see uh, a lot of movement here in Glacius, depending obviously on those results. But 
Kingsman, what about the matchups in Ignis Conference? Well, Drakes are going to find Darkness. Darkness finding Drakes on a bit of bad form. And I'm sure they are going to be loving it as well. They are unbeaten in this season. Something that is rare for Wolfie. And well, they're going to find Drakes. Can they continue their unbeaten run at the top of the table? They have Zulu tonight and Zulu... I don't think you're going to get a result out of that. They might surprise me here in the booth. We never know. We can never predict what is going to happen at the bottom of the table. But a big week for Thanatos in the mid table. They have six. They are sorry. They are in sixth, and they have seventh and eighth. A real week to move away and secure a top six spot. But a team that's been on bad form recently. I've talked about it. That have a chance to regain as they play ninth and tenth. Is Tigris. Loss, loss week for them and draw, draw in the previous week. Leaves them on four wins, four draws, four losses. And they have ninth and tenth, respectively. On paper, it's the easiest week they could possibly have. So, this is where they need to find results. Or we could see them slip out of the top six. Yeah, so, here as well, some high impact matchups happening. Maybe we can catch one of them uh, on stream to see. If it's really that high level. But now slowly going to the highest tier. But there's just one before that. It's going to be the master tier. The one where Kingsman still has to play three series. But first going to you <laughs> Pegasus. For the recap of week number six. From the Glacies Conference. And it is a great week from Infinity. Who do in fact get themselves a double win. Versus Kings. And Heck, so trying to make a lot more progress near the top of the table. And Heck actually did end up beating Sh Vulcan, which was quite a shock win. And you'll see on the table later why that was such a shock. And then my game to watch last week, unfortunately, Vulcan versus IOV. Two teams that are right next to each other on the table did sadly end up fizzling to a draw. But at least I didn't get as many draws this week as I did in the previous ones. Messiahs get quite an important loss versus Slytherin near that playing qualification area of the table. Transcend have quite a good week. Uh, well, sorry, no. Transcend had a bit of a middle in the park week, actually. Drawing Messiahs, which is quite an important drop of points, but also sweeping illusion to try and get them away from that top spot so six in going six and two is a midweek for you good to know okay hey, Kingsman, what happened in the ignis conference right. yeah okay true, well true. there were two double win weeks and hades stay unbeaten it's a huge week for them as they go four and zero oh against montezuma the side that you'll see where they end up. And they also get a 3-1 on the new Wyverns roster. So a huge week for them. It shows why they're at the top of the table. But a side that are not going to want to remember this week is Haven. They find a loss to Gladiators and a loss to Serenara. That is going to set them way away from their top fight with Hades. If we remember from last week, they were neck and neck all season long. And this is just like them. They've fallen over in the race. And Hades have run away with it. But a huge week for those sides. And a side that isn't going to want to remember this week is Leo. They are the other side to find double loss. And it's a bit worse than Haven as they go 0-8. Yeah, so the only thing besides, well, two bad weeks. One being for Leo, the other one being for, I already forgot the name. Is that it's really difficult for you to say Montezuma. But we'll, we'll get there, don't worry. <laughs> Pegasus, let's talk about the Glacy standings. Well, look at that difference between first and second place. It is currently three game wins, and hopefully you'll start to see why I think that draw between Transcend and uh, and Messiahs was a bit of a missed opportunity as they currently sit at an eight-game difference. It could have been a lot more. I think they were favoured to win, but 
nevertheless, they do push a lot of positions. And this is more what I've been promising in the previous week. Nine teams with some arrows next to them. Unfortunately, the bottom three completely changing with King Sophos or, or Sophos and Slipping dropping all the way down. The Ox Gaming roster heck, which, like I said, I think I've had a pretty decent week as a franchise overall. Pushing themselves up to seventh, one point away from Messiahs, who are just about in that play-in area. And Illusion, it's quite a big drop. If I'm reading this correctly, that's from second all the way to fifth. But not looking like there's actually much difference, especially to get third place. That is very doable with Vulcan. Only two wins ahead of them. Yeah, so Pegasus, you've been promising this for six weeks now, and finally you got nine arrows. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully somewhere in the coming three weeks you get ten arrows. It would be nice. But you Fingers said crossed. it's a lot of movement. So, Kingsman, now to you for the Ignis standings. And the bit you pointed out, he's been promising that for six weeks in six tiers, actually. So, okay. it's a massive... Okay. Round of applause, it's finally happened. And it's going to be Hades of 34 wins who top the table with Montezuma on 30 wins. Hey. Yeah, I can say it, but but you know what? I, 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 it's easier to say for me the other one. Haven, though, double loss week, find them on 29. <laughs> and that sweep for Hades is showing why it's so important. The gap is four games. Without that game, they're tied in the top. But Hades will have that series lead and now haven and gladiators 29 27 that's the top three battle i'm looking towards with nara and wyverns potentially looking to get into it on 25 24. nox though are a series between them a series between them and wyverns but they found a their third win of the season i will be looking to push on leo oh and eight week a week to forget as they slip down the table to eighth abyss they haven't found a win in the last five can they do something to keep up with the top six here? And Dogon, they, yes, they may have found their second win of the season, but it's not enough to put them anywhere near the top six as it stands. Yeah, so the top four really close to each other that can really move. And then the fifth, the sixth, and seventh, a little bit battling out who's going to go where. But it does prove maybe for a lot of interesting matchups. So let's take a look at the fixtures. First, going to you, Pegasus. What did you pick in the Glacies Conference? Well, there's one match that has really caught my eye here, and it's Infinity versus Vulcan. And actually, right next to it, we've got Infinity versus Iovi. This is where they really have to prove themselves to be the best. You've got to beat some of the other best. First versus third, and first versus fourth. Fingers crossed that we can have any of those games streamed, and... It appears that Transcend, they've got themselves a little double game day today, having to play both Kings and Heck, which uh, I, I think they are favoured to do as the second place team. But you never know what can happen when you play two matches in such quick succession. But it turns out they're not even the only ones doing it. Look at Messiahs playing both Iovi and Illusion. Uh, both mid-table mid games that are going to... Proved to be very important as uh, they are currently on equal... Sorry, Iovi and Illusion are currently on equal game wins. Messiah is only two behind them. So this is a great opportunity to claw back and even throw yourself into fourth place. If all goes well, of course. Yeah, if all goes well. That's a, that's a very big if. But, you know, maybe they can prove it. Maybe Transcend can get the double one. Maybe Messiah can get the double one as well. Only time will tell. But now going to you, Kingsman, what matchups did you pick in the Ignis Conference? I picked the game that happened on the 10th of October. Uh, who, who is, who is <laughs> letting these people schedule? There's one every week in it's Ignis Master that's scheduled wrong. It's not Serene. Serenity has done it right this week. So it's a massive thing for Serenity. But Nox Haven was played on the 10th of the 10th. I really want to know if Haven have continued that loss streak and if Nox have made it into the top six. But I, I'm assuming that's for the 10th of November. I'm sure Tavish has no idea, but... Talk to nations, <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Talk to nations is what I've been told. But one team that does have a massive week, though, is Wyverns. They play fourth and fifth. The two teams above them 
double win leaves them fourth place and pushing on to haven whereas hades they have a sort of tough week as well and they play fourth place gladiators <clears throat> who are unbeaten have only lost twice all season and they also have leo who went 0 and 8 but they've got a new roster sign now so we could see some new things out of them and i'm pretty sure that chebs will be hoping they can yeah so also a couple matchups here and then uh, like i said for leo new roster that a little bit of pressure there but that is it for the master tier now we're gonna move to the highest tier premier let's really hope that we have a lot of things to talk about that a lot of series played going to you now pegasus first for the glacies conference well i believe we actually have three games I was, you know what but for premier i think that is a pretty good all of them having the same score also interestingly uh visionary continuing their care in the glacies division beating solace 3-1 who have actually both played 24 games, so it's a fair comparison between them. They seem pretty locked so far. Esportsburg also going 3-1 against Ox Gaming, which I believe actually gives Ox Gaming their third win. So doing that against second place, I mean, I, I guess they'll take that. And Illusory versus Council of Sir Illusory were probably favorites going into this they're now on equal games played so once again we can actually compare them it was a win for illusory giving themselves an extra two space difference and you'll see later what that does for them yeah, so three results three things that could probably shift the table a little bit kingsman what can you tell me about the ignis results well, we got one less result, and both were non... No one won. It was Panthera Sentient, which ended 2-2. Two, two. I think it was pretty short. That was near the top of the table clash for them. So it's a, it's an interesting result. And Leviathan's Oblivion, 2-2. Two, two. And again, that was more of a top of the table clash. And Leviathan's only one win, and Oblivion, with that draw, managed to stay unbeaten. All right, and there you have it, the results of week six. Well, at least the results that we have. We still, you know, miss a couple. But let's take a look at the standings, because some things probably have shifted. So, Pegasus, what happened in the Glacies Conference? Well, first of all, I'm seeing a lot more twos in that first digit spot, which I was not seeing in the previous week. So more games have been played, luckily. And Visionary, on 18 wins, here at the top, second and third place with a series in hand. But even if they were to sweep, Visionary would remain at the top of the table. So a dominating performance from them so far in Glacies. And a fuser here with that series in hand over Illusory and Solace. Still stays ahead of them, albeit with equal game wins. And towards the bottom, like I said, it doesn't show it there for Ox Gaming. They did get their third game win ever, so a little bit of credit where credit is due. However, Momentum, Council of Sir and Click drop a bit down on the table. Click, probably because they haven't been playing enough games, but Council of Sir, that position is pretty locked in. Yeah, it, uh, definitely at the bottom half, it does seem pretty locked, but the top half, there's still room for a little bit of movement, and now going to you... Kingsman for the Ignis standings. Well, Oblivion take it only on games played. Hosky haven't played games. And Oblivion take first place. Team Hosky, they are in second with an 88% win rate. Huge for them. And when they get back, I'm sure they will overtake Oblivion. But Sentin Esports move up to third place with Leviathans in fourth. Big weeks for both teams. But Tenebris have a higher win percentage than both. So when they get back, I'm sure the table will change again. Panther and Shaman, though, on technicality, are tied with only a series behind them. So Leviathans could still really slip down the table, even as far as Kronos and Team Serene, who Team Serene have half the games not played, three series in hand on four, and Kronos have two games in hand on seven. And Mustu Fluck, they, they're just struggling at the bottom 
They have four wins all season and that's come from two draws and three times of getting swept. Uh, so here, hey, you know, we can say one thing though. We had 10 arrows here on this graph. That's that's beautiful. So it's not for Pegasus, but you know, it's, ah. it's nice. And now going to the fixtures. Pegasus, what can you tell me about the Glacies fixtures? Well, we have two scheduled games here. So I'm going to give them the respect and talk about them first. And luckily, I think the most exciting matchup is one of the ones that is scheduled. It is Visionary versus Effuser. Like I said, they Effuser do have a series in hand, but Visionary still remain five game wins ahead. If they can get a good result here, they can really start to catch up to them and Oh, and of course, overtake Esportsburg, who would be playing Solace if they had scheduled. Now, Illusory, currently in fourth place on a free win streak, do face Ox Gaming, who are on a six loss streak and only have a free game win. Maybe they can scrape out a fourth one. Maybe they can cause a miracle. This is Rocket League after all. And Momentum and Broker, it's, it's, it's a shame, or, well, like I said, however that is pronounced. It, it, it's a shame that these two haven't scheduled yet, because it's 6th versus 7th place, both on equal uh, games played, with only a one game win difference between them. That would be so exciting to see who can overtake the other one there. And the last team I haven't, uh, the last matchup I haven't spoken about is Council of Sir versus Solace, who... Actually, both have 24 games played so far, so they've done pretty well at getting the games in so far. There is currently a four-game difference between them, I believe. Click, click Council of Sir. No, I clicked the completely wrong ones. They are actually next to each other on the table. Click being the ones with many, many games in hand, looking to maybe climb the table and prove that they were just sleeping giants ready to take over Glaciers. <clears throat> All right, so, Kingsman, you have two dates. Well, I can actually tell you a third date from that was supposed to be played two weeks ago. Because Tenebris is playing Team Husky tomorrow. So, do with that what Ooh. you will, and let me hear your thoughts about your other matchups. Well, Tenebris Husky is going to be an amazing game, because both sides are going to be pushing for the top three. So, I, I really want to see that on stream, but that all depends. So, Oblivion Hosky, it's first versus second, obviously not being played yet. Must do Fluck Team Stream, it's the bottom of the table. Got no team having a win there, but it's not been scheduled, so I guess we'll never know. Tenebris Shaman. Tenebris need the win, so does Shaman. Shaman have four draws, one loss. A win for them will propel them up the table. Sentient Kronos, which is being played on Wednesday. Kronos, two games in hand, and Sentient want to keep up with the top three. A good result for Sentient allows that, but a win for Kronos drags them back up into it. And Leviathan's Panthera, whichever team wins that, is going to be looking to secure their place in the top six. Yeah, so, a couple interesting matchups happening there. And there we have it. We had all the tiers, we had all the standings, all the fixtures, all the results. So now there's only one thing left to talk about, and that's obviously the franchise standings, because all the tiers lead to all the franchises as well. And Pegasus, I'm going to let you talk about the bottom half of those standings. Well, of course, I did say that Ox Gaming, them being in my conference, I thought it was a pretty good week for them, and it's evident here with them taking a little bit of progress, albeit Fort Templar, DSQ and Shaman, Still with quite a couple games to play, I'm sure that is those pesky premieres. But System of Solaris also making a lot of space on 127 game wins and uh, 264 games played. So they, they are pretty locked. We see a lot of red arrows on my screen, unfortunately. So I'm sure, Kingsman, you might have a lot of blue to look at. Well, I do sure hope so. So, let's see what we have moving in. Team Serene up top with 136. Of Ofusa moving down on 138. <laughs> Tied with Alpha Surge 
Might have Hades hearts off to them. Had an amazing week, especially in Challenger and Rival. That rewards them with seventh. Visionary two ahead on six. Sit on six. I hope they're not on six. On 142 wins. Green Phoenix, though, on 144. They were the Giants last season. And they've become they're still near the top. But there's two runaways at the top. And it's not Council of Sura Forge who are tied on 145 wins apiece. Sanctuary on 155. Huge for them, especially considering Hosky have games in hand. And Shadow Esports. 163 wins, top of the lot, with a eight-game gap. Yeah, and there you have it. All the moves in the franchise standings. And obviously, there are some things that we cannot say for sure, because the Premier tier has just that option to play a little bit later, maybe a week or two, week or three. Depends on their personal schedules, because, you know, they have Premier, they have busy life or something. But most of them were pretty accurate, and, you know, to see Shadow and to see Sanctuary that close to the... Well, not that close to them, being the top two, and even with Sanctuary having some games in the head, that is pretty good to see. But now we've talked enough, let's take a look at what you guys did this last week in the clip of the week montage. I'm off. I see. Oh, I just go if you want. I'll be there first. Stay back. Uh, yeah, I I'm third. I'm third. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh, <laughs> god. Oh, <laughs> god. Oh, it's me and Charles going to this game. I'm not going to take that. Kind of me and Charles going off this <laughs> No, I'm not. Something. I'm sitting left. I'm like, you, you. I'll go, I'll go. Just tag him on that. He's gonna. I'll I'll try, I'm covering pass. So. I'm in trial. Double team. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. again. Nice right, open, open. Behind you, behind you. Oh my god, you pick. No! Because I'm still for the week. Wait, no, you put. I, that, that, yeah, that was going to clip of the week. It was nice, but like. I'll put it in for you if you want. I'll put it in. You can't score open it, but you can score this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to go All right, there we have a, a beautiful compl uh, compilation of clips. And, you know, Pegasus should go first the entire time. So, Kingsman, what did you think? Well, as much as I'd love to roast Skaze here and say he's probably tried that for 50 hours in free play before he's finally pulled it off. Uh, yeah, it is a still a very nice shot. But it, it did take him having to be dimed up by the opponent, I'll be honest. Uh, but still... To get the control off the ceiling, as much as he probably has practiced it for 100 plus hours this week, he it still will get my vote. It's still a very nice shot. All right, so Pegasus, I'm going to treat you the same way. What did you think? Well, he's worked hard for it, and I think he deserves it. My vote is going to also go to Skaze. However, I do want to give some respect to Bowler as well, who I also thought <laughs> scored a very nice shot. When I first saw it, I was like, this is the one I'm voting for. Nothing can beat it. And then Skaze played right after. So a, a bit unlucky to score such a good clip this week where I think there was a slightly better one heading in. Yeah, and... I want to say I'm going to be biased and vote for my own player, but I also, you know, have to respect certain things. In this case, it's just like... It, 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 you expect it from high-level players, but still, it, it was cool to see. So, he also got my vote in the, in the poll. And looking at the poll right now, I think it's pretty fair to say that he has won it as well. Because, you know, there's a difference between him and second place with, like, five votes. So, you know... Congrats, guys, for winning Clip of the Week. 
Let's run the tape again. Let's just take another look at all those beautiful clips and of the winner. Come on. I see. I'll be there first. Stay back. Uh, yeah, stay back. I, I'm third. I'm third. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh, <laughs> my god. Yeah. Me and Charger are going to be the best. Me and Charger are going to be the best. No, I'm not some. I'm sticking left. How about you? I'll go, I'll go. Just hang on that. He's gonna. I'll I'm covering pass. I'm control. Double skimming. I've got Guys, open, open. Bunchy, bunchy. Oh my god. No! Because that was going the week. Wait, no. It put, I, that, that, yeah, that was going to clip of the week. It was nice. But like, I'll put it in for you if you want. You can't still open it, but you can score there. Okay. <laughs> And there we have it, and beautiful clips of the week, and we're going now straight into the fail of the week, and you know, I, I must say, I just heard some beautiful news before I went in, before we're gonna watch this fail of the week, because I already have my personal fail of the week here, because here I have, I have, I'm hoping I'm putting it right away, I have Kingsman, and apparently here I have the second coming of Nicki Minaj. Yeah. I don't know why, <laughs> but this is a fail yeah. of the week for me. So let's roll the tape, let's see the actual fail of the week. I'm not going to give it yet. Till the way he waddle waddle. Then he waddled away, he waddle waddle. Till the very next day, bum 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 bum. When the doctor. <laughs> okay, so. Um, <laughs> Pegasus, what do you think? I'm just going to throw it straight to you. That, that's Nicki Minaj to you, and also, it, it, it's 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 another old Hamsty masterclass on the edits, isn't it? He is he's just incredible. I love him so much. But the fail was also funny as well. We like also I love to see the mock death stare make that showing again. The RSC LAN, you know, add, adding some more culture to the ERSC. You know, grand, beautiful. Yeah, thanks for your feedback, Nicki Minaj. Kingsman, what did you think? Well, considering I know Mash is the go, he he must have just yeah. thought he was scoring on it on his own net. But obviously, we all love a mock death snare in RSC. So again, credit. I, I feel like we're saying this every week, but credit to Steve for his editing. It is just on the money as normal. So big shout out there. It, it makes the clips every week, but. I'm pretty sure was it wasn't it um, Mox uh, someone trying to score against Mox last week and they couldn't score. And then the previous week it was someone trying to score onto Sinksy and couldn't score. So I'm pretty sure that's three times now that Onka have been in fail of the week. So I mean, I I don't know what you guys think, but I I love the shot, but what are the odds? I think it's staged. It's rigged. It's just scripted at this point. They just want to have Anka in there every week. But it, it is a beautiful edit. We have to give credit what credit is due. So let's roll again. Let's enjoy that tape one more time before we continue. Sam, I'll give it yet. Waddle away, waddle waddle. Then he waddled away, he waddle waddle. Bum, 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 
Yeah, a beautiful fail of the week going to Mesh. Congratulations, my condolences, however you want to say it. And... Okay, I hope Biggest is alright, because we're going into sorry, the sorry, weekly sorry, award. I, sorry, no, no, no. What what does the name oh. say, Tadish? <laughs> what does the name say? <laughs> okay, Sauce so, so, thank you in the background for... Helping, you know, make sure that Pegasus and Nicki Minaj feels welcomed here on the show. So let's go into the weekly awards. Starting obviously with Prospect. Nicki Minaj, you can take it away. Oh, f thank you, thank you. Well, we start off in Prospect and we've got ourselves an MVP in the form of Loopy with 500 points per game. He also finds himself with the Silver for Finisher. Edged out by White Pony with 1.86 goals per game. And for Striker, we have Worst of Ox Gaming, Playmaker, Sucky Sucker, and in Savior, we've got 2.25 saves per game for Pure Skill. Uh, beautiful uh, accolades here in the Prospect tier. Now, going to you, Kingsman, for Challenger. Well, Slayer Dabs, 583 points per game. He's going to be your MVP this week. Yummy, second for MVP, first for finisher. Ozan, though, on Shrine is going to be your striker. 66% 6 shooting. Slayer Dabs picking up his points clearly from the assists with two assists per game. And Elias, he must have been a very good FA. 3.75 oh saves per game. That is one hell of an impressive feat. Clearly didn't play against the Pegasus this week. Of course, of course. And now going into Rival. Signing off with our MVP, it's Hexos with about five four. Oh, sorry. We've got Hexos again for finisher. Oh, let me repeat myself. We've got Hexos again for striker. Let me re... Ah, oh, not quite. It's Might of Hades again, but it is Sammy Boy. Someone has to provide for Hexos. 1.5 assists per game. And next to him for the Saviour, we have Stealthy Wolf with 2.5 equal to No No 77. But Hexos, what a tear it has been for him this week. 2.5 goals per game coming from a 66.6, .6, I'm sure, reoccurring save percentage. Uh, shooting percentage, sorry. My, my mistake. Well, thank you for the correction there, Nicki Minaj. As your MVP this week for Elite. <laughs> <laughs> so, Incredible. So ladies, and, so, ladies and Oh, this player is insane. Oh, they've done four. Can they go all the way? They couldn't. They couldn't. Yeah! Oh, they have. Oh, they have. He's done it. The unknown player. Who knows what roster they're on. But they have clearly tearing up elite at least we know it's not wolfie definitely not but it could be anyone else in elite ladies and gentlemen round of applause for whoever this person is because they are tearing up elite this week an absolute mad tear for them as uh i uh, we reloaded hey oh, it wasn't wolfie. Hey. good news it could have been echo no it wasn't echo though 620 points per game he'll be your mvp Gamey, though, 2.5 goals per game. He featured in Clip of the Week, but he's clearly scoring goals elsewhere. 2.5 goals per game. 385MS, better known as Kevin, the GM. 61.9% shooting. He's your striker. Strafe, though, he is your playmaker. Two assists per game. Very good performance. Clearly setting up Gamey a lot. And Slimy, on the Ofusa roster, I correct, forget. Sorry, ignore me. I don't know what roster he's on, or what the team name is. But forget it. You know what? 2.67 saves the game. He's your saviour. Good save, Kingsman. Good save. And will we have players in Master? Yes, we will. Starting off with our MVP. It's Jazz. Might of Hades showing up for all my rewards, it seems like, so far. With about 570 points per game. And for a finisher, we have Green Phoenix's Mimical with 1.9 roughly. And Striker shooting percentage. Oh, we've actually got three FAs taking our final spot, subbing in when they were needed most. It is Matian with a 70% shooting percentage. SK with 1.25 assists per game. Actually, 
equaling both our silver and bronze pigs there. I believe it's Vosalas and uh, Earthling. We'll just call him Earthling. And for our saviors, another FA, like previously mentioned, it is Wizzo with 2.75. Well, we go to the highest tier now, and it's been Nico812 on the illusory roster. And Oles, second in MVP, first in finisher, first in striker as well is going to be Oles. Oh, and there's the man who sets him up. It's Marmon on 1.75 assists per game. And Lexa, or Lekka, I don't know how you say it, from the Panthera roster. He's your savior with 2.75 saves per game. Here we go. It is time for the team of the week. Who were our biggest performance? Well, starting off in prospect, we've got AR playing for Ulta in Challenger. We have Might of Hades' Yummy for, for Team Orcus. And now going up to Rival, we have a Tide Deer for Continuum. Elite, we have got Wolfie, who you've mentioned Ooh. quite a few times today kingsman but here he is Ooh. getting Ooh. the mvp and it's also our clip of the week winner here in master skays getting on the team of the week and finally in the premier tier for illusory it's nico 812 yeah and there you have it all the accolades for all the tiers and the team of the week. So congratulations to everyone who was in, well, who won golden in the top three. And for the fantasy league, I'm just going to go straight to you, Kingsman, to take it away. Well, we see a ridiculously old Raw Bean, and he is your fantasy top one, 1348 points. And then the goofy and silly clan of Axwell, some Rubods, they take second and third. But Mox will stay first overall. Mega week for him on 7,000. Oh, mega season. 7,829 points. Mithor and Axor second and third. Halo, though, will be top four. Master, 373. Sinksy, top for Elite, 341. And Sue's going to be top for Rival, 305. Neuronic's going to be top of Challenger with 403. And Stingray is going to be top of Prospect with 300 and 64 points there's my Nicki minaj to continue this oh 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 so, oh sorry did you want me to take the second half well i will we're into predictions now our weekly top three it's stingray with 35 closely trailing in front of andre with 32 and the gap gets even closer with a two-point difference between Mox and Andre, and he's on the top every week. I actually, I think this is the same top three we see. Halo with 158, and Mithral with 154, who I think will be looking to try and overtake Holo, Halo in the upcoming week. Yeah, and there uh, we had the Fantasy Weekly leaderboard as well. So now we basically did everything right. We had the results for all the tiers. We had the uh, franchise standings. We had the clip and a beautiful fill of the week from Mesh. We had the weekly awards. We had the Fantasy League. So before we gonna close off here, do you guys have any final thoughts? Well, I think it's been a great week in the Glacies tier. Maximum two draws per conference so far before we were getting fives and fives all around. And the draws are exciting for one. So hopefully this form can continue. Maybe one day I will get more nine arrow movements, more than one in one stream. So I, I can only pray. I need to steal some of that from Kingsman. Well, I mean, wait till he gets a 10 arrow movement. God, the man is going to be out of his chair. The oh, white no. the white is going to be off the wall. You you aren't going to see. His room's going to be in tatters. He's going to be full of excitement. But yeah, week six, for those of you who don't know, 
roster lock is at the end of this week, week seven. So this is where lock rosters really get solidified. This is where we see those late season runs, if they're going to be made. This is where we see teams drop off on that bad run of form. And well, after this week, things don't change in terms of rosters, unless it's your mentality. Well, that can always go downhill. Mm. But there's still time for every team to pick it up. Even Kanan's Tavish, I have, I, I believe in you. I believe in you, Tavish. I have, I have faith you can turn around, start pulling out some eight and zero weeks, and get top six. But there's still hope for everyone out there. Yeah, there's also hope for you that you don't have to play your three sub uh, sub series here. <laughs> if you get cuts, then you know fix it. But obviously, it's been a blast doing this week again. And obviously, a massive thank you to our sponsors, Team Husky, Team Serene, Games About Badass, making everything possible here. And, you know, it's a standard crew as always. I'm host uh, Kingsman and Pegasus, uh, Nicki Minaj, helping me out here on the desk. And obviously, Sauce in the background, making sure everything is run smoothly. He's probably waving to you. Yes, there he is. He's Yay. waving. We'll, we'll wave back to him. So... The, the quick the sauce peak there as well, that everyone can see how he's doing it all. But that is it for us tonight. Obviously, make sure to follow us on the socials, stay up to date with all the streams that are happening. And, you know, three streams this week that will be announced soon. So hopefully we'll see you there. But for now, have a good night. Suffer caught up in a matrix Have to keep waiting, I gotta be patient What's up with all these people hating? Yeah, I go run in the maze Forgetting all those days left Dumb in the haze, it's better there Wasting my moment in love Like us, so okay, she play with it She broke it, yeah I don't care I thought it would be better Hate it, I put in this effort yeah. I put in this effort yeah. Wanted to be bad I hope you know Caught up in a matrix Have to keep waiting I gotta be patient What's up with